Hi, <laughs> welcome to my channel. My name is Vita Luca. This is my second video of what I love about the Czech Republic. In this video, we are going to be discussing some topics about Canada, and so you can also check out my video on our things that I miss about Canada. And so please check out both of these videos at the same time. So if you watch this one, please watch the other one. And if you watch the other one, please watch this one. So number 10, what I love about the Czech Republic is the weather. Me here, we don't have a winter. Like when you live in Prague, there is no winter. It doesn't get colder than minus five degrees Celsius because I measure temperature outside in Celsius. I measure temperature inside my stove in Fahrenheit. Canada confuses you. This is why I like it all just being one thing. It, the snow doesn't stay on the ground when you're inside of Prague. When you leave Prague, yes, there's snow everywhere. You get a winter. It's beautiful. And it's still beautiful inside of Prague too. But to me, it's not really a winter when you live in Prague. It's more like a fall to spring. And winter doesn't last for six months of the year. So that's why I love the Czech Republic. I get all four seasons and you know, you get like hot and cold periods every now and then. So even though you could be dying from heat, the next week it could be like cool and it's great. Like, I love it. I love that because it's not like that in Canada. I, I enjoy the weather out here very much. It still rains, it snows. Number nine is just the general way that the country is. So I really like the benefits that it gives its people. And EU citizens that get to just enjoy those same benefits and the permanent residents that get to enjoy those same benefits. Um, so some of them are like, the Czech Republic has maternity leave where you can take up to three years of maternity leave. I think that's amazing. Like Canada is at 1.5 right now, but you can get three years of maternity leave here. Of course, they're not paying your full wage. They're not paying your full wage in Canada either. So I think it's a pretty good system. Also, like you, if after so many sick days of work, the government will start to pay you. There's of course a welfare system here. I follow politics, especially out here. I don't, I don't want to get involved in anything. I'm not a citizen. I can't vote anyways. I don't want to get involved in all that. So I don't really know how the country fully operates, of course. But the general idea that I've heard about it, I really enjoy it. I really like it. Um, I like the laws that they have. Of course, you don't really get overtime out here. Um, you can, but it's not really heard of. And they, they do have certain things in places, which isn't so bad, like I don't mind it. Um, but generally, I like the way the life is and how the country works and the things that they give the people. Like I like their public health care. I think it's, I wouldn't say like the doctors and the hospitals function better than in Canada, but the health care, free system does. Now I can't, I haven't been able to view my, my taxes out here, like what they take off my paycheck just because my company set up a password for me and it doesn't work and I don't know what my password is. I still need to go back to my HR person and figure out what it is. Like when you have their public health care, your ambulance is covered and then the ambulance isn't even that expensive anyways and your doctor's visits aren't even that expensive, even if you aren't to have coverage. like. I, I'll have videos about me experiencing going to the hospitals here and I did have one where I used my private insurance and I had to pay for it up front first and then got reimbursed later. But yeah, like they still covered my ambulance bill and they did that. And like um, the public insurance that I'm with is Visa Pay. They, they cover, they've covered ambulance bills for me. They've covered full doctor's visits. I didn't have to worry. You just like scan your card and you're good. You don't even have to contact them. Like it's, it's easier. Like, though, like how their public health insurance works is so much easier than how it works in Canada. And that's what I appreciate. And it covers a lot more. Like doctors have written me a certain type of prescription for it. Generally, like my insurance will cover it. And I've, I've gotten a full torso brace completely free for when I dislocated my shoulder on the Metro. All these stories are gonna be to you at some point. So stick around for them. I've got a lot of interesting medical stuff here. I didn't really even go to the hospital in Canada, but like, here, I've gone enough. This country like has come so far in like the last 30 years. Like it's, it's amazing. Number eight is clothes. I go shopping out here so much. Like I gave away like two thirds of my closet just to come out here in the first place. Now I'm like recuperating. And so right now I'm in love with the stores New Yorker. Um, or say and sin say for like the ones that I can go to in stores and I'll find like a few good things in other stores and like CCC is where I get my shoes because they're the only ones that go down to like 35s 
Um, but now I'm looking at like online shopping more. So I do like everything five pounds. Like if I'm going to get a lot of clothes, I'm just going to go there because it'll be cheaper. I'll save money in the long run. Um, and I did a review on them. And actually after doing that review, only like six, six out of 24 items were like something that I couldn't use. And that's just, I found out later it's because I didn't read the sizing charts properly because they don't have any on their website. I looked them up and then I looked at one that told me one thing and then I looked at another one now and I was like, oh, so they were right. They sent me the right things. I just didn't know. But it's like a great way to buy a lot of clothes when you're in Europe for cheap. And so yeah, I really enjoy shopping out here now just because it's, I don't know, like I just love their fashion and I, like the prices of it aren't even that bad. Like sometimes when I think about it and I convert it, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is like ridiculous that I'm just like spending this much. So number six, the reason why I love Prague and specifically for this, is that I love the architecture and the history of Prague. Like going downtown, anywhere, if you come here, anywhere down like the A-Line Metro, the Green Line Metro, that's what I call it, I'm just called by the color. Um, but like all of the, the touristy places, like they're just all so beautiful. I love how they preserved their history and like the old architecture of the buildings, like it's it's all just so amazing. And like like Catholic churches are just beautiful. And the castle is like, it looks like a castle only because of a church inside of it. Like it's just amazing. Like I just, I love it so much. I love how they preserve them. You'll find a bunch of colorful buildings here and it's because like in communism, they were forced to like have gray houses and so once communism ended, a bunch of people went and painted their houses, so they're all super colorful. And like, when you get so high up in Prague and you look out, you'll just see a bunch of orange roofs, and it's just, it's so weird and different, but beautiful, and it's like historically beautiful that way. And so like, that's what I love about Prague. Like, that's what I enjoy so much about living in Prague specifically. Like, if I, I've been to other cities and they're, they're all beautiful in their own way because of how they've kept the history there. And it's just, it's amazing. All the older buildings in Canada have been like demolished for new ones. Like the most, the oldest buildings you'll see is like Parliament, like Parliament Hill or like the city halls generally all look old, but most of the buildings around them are all like super brand new. And so like there's some places in like, downtown Winnipeg that still have like the older buildings, but they're decaying and falling apart. And you can tell, like no one's keeping them in really nice condition like they are here. Um, so number five is the language. Now I'm still currently learning Czech. I probably will be for the next few years. My husband gets annoyed with me because he is self-taught in Czech, but he spoke Ukrainian before and they're like super similar. And I'm struggling with only knowing English and French and trying to somehow make Czech work in my mind. And so I know a few things, just the basics to keep me running. Um, but honestly, what I love about having the language is that barrier, which is weird, I know. But I like having that barrier because like, every time I hear English now, because I don't hear it that often, I like have to listen in, <laughs> which is so bad. It's so bad, but I, I honestly, I feel like I have more privacy, um, Yeah, which is like my number four, is that I have more privacy with that language barrier. I feel like I can um, talk more in English and not have so many people like listening in and understanding what I'm saying and overhearing or like if I'm saying anything bad. So this is like number four and five combined, um, just because I feel like I have more privacy um, with that language barrier because not that many people Speak English, like, yes, a lot do, and there are, like, foreigners and everything here, or expats, just to, they call themselves to make that, themselves feel better. I like just being a foreigner. I'm a Sizinka. That's what I am. I'm a foreigner. I'm not an expat. I don't freaking care. I'm an immigrant. It's what I am. It's better than a tourist. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but, yeah.
I've definitely I've had one conversation with that physicist who lives near me because he listened in on my coworkers and I's conversation. And so for the rest of the train ride till our stop, because we ended up getting off at the same stop together, we were we started talking and everything and then um, then we like walked basically home together and we were just chatting and it was really neat to speak with a physicist who's working out here. Like when I went to US and Canada because I was so used to like listening in, because I would just listen for English or listen for French. I'm like, yes, sense of belonging, I understand you. Uh, when I was there, it was like overwhelming because I was like, heck, I can hear everyone and I understand everyone, oh my gosh. And then like, then I never felt like we had privacy anymore because I'm like, if I can understand everyone, then everyone can understand me. I missed it. When I went to the US and Canada, I missed it. And like, I love, doing certain things in Czech. Like, I like singing in Czech. Though I don't know what I'm singing. I can read. I just don't know what I'm reading. But I like singing in Czech. I like reading in Czech. And to the point where, like, singing in English is kind of boring. And, yeah, it's surprising. Like, I don't speak it, but yet I can sing it. It's just because it's... It's just sound. Like, the whole alphabet system is phonetic. So you just sound it out and you're saying it. And so I also like to make jokes about foreigners speaking Czech. And so number three is that the Czech Republic has clean water almost everywhere. I would say everywhere. I don't know. Out here, people are always telling me about how their water is so clean. And like I know in Canada, like people will say that the water is clean. It's not. It's not at all. I come from Winnipeg. Winnipeg means muddy waters. Like the indigenous people knew that the water was dirty before anyone settled there and they called it muddy waters. Yeah, we import our water to Winnipeg and then even then we've had so many E. coli breakouts and like so many boil water advisories and just generally like no one would tell you that road work is happening. So you would go to like, you'd put in a load of laundry and you'd go to wash your hands and you realize your water's brown and turn on your shower, your water's brown and you're like, great, washing my clothes in this, which is safe. It's just disgusting to think about that you're washing your clothes in dirty water. It's mainly like a prairie province issue. But then it's also like a reservation issue too because our indigenous people on the reserves, they don't get clean water. They're generally, they're always on boil water advisories and I don't think they're ever going to get clean water. And it's like a huge government issue that they don't want to go and resolve and they don't want to fix, even though they owe it to the indigenous to fix it, but they won't. And then reserves have their own issues too with like nepotism and everything as well so sometimes it's not the government not wanting to fix it but like the chief and so it's just like so many issues on so many issues that just should get resolved but I don't know whose responsibility it is to resolve them because I'm not fully involved in politics of everywhere um, but yeah I like how for the most part because I don't know if maybe maybe somewhere in the Czech Republic doesn't have clean water but so far like Prague most likely fully everywhere does um, but at least for me I can like turn on my tap and clean water comes out so I'm grateful for that because it was definitely not something that I had when I was living in Winnipeg or in Saskatoon in Canada it was always like a hit and miss like Saskatoon is definitely better than Winnipeg it, it's still it sucks that there's so much of the country that doesn't have fully clean water and like this country has been around for 150 years and this is one of the things that they can't get right and so number two is safety. The Czech Republic, at least Prague, feels so much safer than anywhere I've ever been in Canada. And I've been to like, been to six provinces out of 10. I feel safer here than any of them that I've ever been in. And I, I traveled to different cities. Vancouver felt pretty safe though and like I felt like I could walk around alone by myself at night um but still here I know I can walk around and I'll be safe at night like I know it I've met so many women who aren't afraid of walking around by themselves late at night so many women who are just comfortable with taking a metro by themselves and like I've had a few moments where like my Canadian mentality went off and I was like this is the time that I'm going to die and be sold to like sex slavery or just something crazy. Of course, that didn't happen. Nothing happened. Pickpocketing and theft is the worst crime here. Where I'm from, murder is. And like right now, my current city, someone that I went to high school with was the 40th homicide this year. 
And like out here, I don't even hear about it. Like if it was bad, you would hear about it. Like I'm not even in Canada and I hear about it on the news. But like here, the worst thing that I have heard from a newspaper was that some man robbed a store with his eggplant. Let's just say that because I didn't want to keep this family friendly. So you know, but that's the worst thing that I've heard. That and like that actually came up in my news feed. Because like I still hear about everything that's going on in Canada, everything that's going on in Winnipeg, and like even though I don't watch the news in either place because I don't have a TV here. I don't need that TV. I don't need a TV here. Like that's the difference of the lifestyles here. Um, but a few like foreigners saying like, oh, I got my thing stolen or oh, my wallet was stolen on this metro. Has anyone found it? Or oh, I lost this. Has anyone found it? Like pickpocketing and theft are like the worst crimes out here. As a woman in the Czech Republic, I feel completely safe. I feel completely fearless because I'm not worrying about anything and I'm not scared of anything. And I'm like, cause nothing's gonna happen. And so my number one thing that I love about the Czech Republic is its public transportation. It is amazing. Like, so amazing. Like, they got this right. And this is something that I don't think anywhere in Canada has gotten right, is the public transportation. I, I can't, like, Vancouver is like, okay, and Toronto, I don't even know. But, like, the public transportation in Prague runs so smoothly, it's amazing. Like, you go to the metro, I love the metro, by the way. You go to the metro, and you have a map and you can see all of the stops that it takes. It stops at every single one all the time. There's the same amount of time to get in and out at all of them. And you see it all. You see where they link up. So if you need to make a transfer to get to another stop, you can. And you know, the Metro has a start and an end and then it just restarts from that point. And if you need to go further out than that, it's easy to catch a bus. Like literally this entire city is just like mapped out and you can like see those maps in the metros. When you go to a bus stop or a tram stop, you can see where, what stop you are at, where the bus has been, where the bus is going or the tram. And then when it comes to that stop, and then you can see if you know what stop you need, then you can just like either if it's above, like if it's before that stop, then you just like cross the street, go to the other stop and take it from there or you can like just catch it and you just wait for when it comes. And then like, it's just amazing because I'm like in Canada, at least Winnipeg and Saskatoon, Hamilton, you get to a bus stop, you don't know when the bus is coming. You don't know what bus really goes there. There's like nothing for it. You got to call, you got to get a pamphlet, something. It's just a mess and it takes so much longer. Transportation system is really, really bad is on holidays and Sundays. Like that's when it's painfully slow where you got like a 10 to 15 minute at most, which seems really long, but like in Canada, if you miss the bus, you're waiting 30 minutes, 30 minutes minimum. Cause then that bus might be late. And yeah, so you're just waiting there forever, at least in Winnipeg, Saskatoon, maybe Hamilton. Hamilton's bus system, I don't even know what's going on with it. Like that's how bad I see it as anyways because I saw the route mapped out and the bus driver didn't even go that route. So I'm like, I don't even know. But yeah, like the system out here runs so extremely well. I've not seen a system that works better. Like I've been on New York's Metro, which is just overly expensive, a waste of your time, just smelly and gross. Like these are at least like clean and they function really well. And yeah, it's so cheap actually too. One month pass, is 30 Canadian dollars and you get that's yeah, roughly about like 30 to 40 Canadian dollars for the whole month you can use that on buses trams and metros all within like the Prague one zone area which then if you want to go further out than that which you generally don't need to but if you need to then you would just like pay an extra 12 crowns for that one trip out and then coming back in is free again and then um well it's not free but like it's covered under the pass and then if you get the year pass, it's 10 crowns a day, which is like 50 to 75 cents a day to ride metro buses or trams as much as you want. Thank you for watching. Continue watching my other videos. I've got a lot more content coming out and have yourselves a great day.